streets. Revolutionary guy let out the streets. Locked in a cage, I'ma let out the hood, out the hood, out the hood. Wake up, get out the sheets. We came from our mouth, but get my peace. You take the west side, take out the east. I'ma put them in a the cage, never let out the hood. Yeah. I don't want It doesn't matter what team at what level is going to face a roller coaster of a year. You're going to have your ups, you're going to have your downs. We started off not as well as I wanted to. We lost our first six games. But I think that made us a better team down the road. It brought us together. Then we got our first win, and then we got hot. We won 18 of the next 21, and it carried right into conference. And the coaches will tell you, we dovetailed everything toward conference. And that first weekend, we got rained out with a Benedictine, but we got to open against Providence and we outscored them 50 to one in three games. And so that was the jumping off point for us. And so from there, it just took off and our senior leadership kicked in. Uh, guys like Eddie Rivero, who became, you know, our, our de facto leader, even though we had coaches, or pardon me, three captains that were voted by their peers who all renounced their captaincy. Um, seniors all basically and, and, and grad students and so we as coaching staff didn't have to do as much where the leadership's concerned yeah we have to lead practice and, and do all that and be coaches but we had on-field generals which was outstanding and because of that leadership we were able to just let them do their thing we average eight and a half runs a game I'm in the third base box I don't have to give a lot of signs I know we're just going to flat out out hit other teams the fact that we have great coaching staff as well I mean, we had all the pieces in place, support from the university and the city, um, great players who did well in the classroom and outstanding coaching staff, fans, credible venue to play. It, it was all set up to be a successful season and I just fell a little short of our goal, but very happy with the way that the season went after we got that first couple of weeks out of our system. Mound tricks, all right, mound business. So everybody knows, Coach Dylan go out there, unless we're making a change, and I'll go out there and we'll talk about it, okay? So let's go over bunt D first, right? Men on first, if we can get the guy at second, fine. If not, it's usually get an out, right? We have to at least get an out, that's the thing, okay? They get the bunt down, fine. Somebody feel the bunt, throw the ball, depending on where he bunts it, okay? It's getting out at first base, at the very least. If it's a hard bunt back to you, we got second covered, catcher is yelling it, yelling it out. Two, 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 right? Okay. Two is that's first second in particular. But might just we might go right to this. Okay? I forget which you guys all know which one. What? Two, three. Three on the board. Four, 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 this is big. <clears throat> yeah.
go, Warriors have three, one, two, three, Warriors! Pretty much Eddie, uh, Eddie Rios was a, uh, a big part of our success. Uh, he led a lot of the uh, Cal Pack in um, different categories. Fun guy to have around. A lot of guys loved him. Uh, good team uh, team leader by, uh, by talent, really. I mean, he made guys want to compete. He made guys want to be what he was doing. And uh, for that, he was really important to our, uh, our success. And we are lucky to have him back. Eddie Rios always wanted to improve his game. He always came to me. He always asked me for help. He, he and I worked on his changeup, and it became one of his better pitches. But his best pitch was his fastball. I mean, he, he touched 90, flirted with 90 quite a bit. Um, but to be able to consistently sit at 88, it was it was a pretty big thing, especially with his fastball. I mean, it's a heavy fastball. It, it comes off like it's 95, especially with his uh, changeup curveball combination. Uh, it looked like it was coming in a lot a lot quicker. Get up, boy, get down there! Jack Barrios. He's just a great guy to have around. He's a he's a funny guy. He's serious. He's 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 a competitor. When he's not behind the dish, he's lighting up the uh, the dugout. He's he's being a good leader. He he has a good character in the dugout. Although he doesn't have a filter sometimes, he is someone that can bring a good laugh on the field. But when it's serious time, he knows that uh, we need that out of him. And he he's the kind of guy that you can you can be his friend. But when it's competitive, he will make you think that he hates you. But at the end of the day, after practice, he's right back to you and he, he loves you. Um, he, he's the kind of guy we look forward to having uh and we that's something we're gonna miss uh westliff is gonna miss jack barrios and uh all he he brought to the table on and off the field although he was a yankees fan unfortunately uh we we still loved him to death he made the catchers compete because they wanted that spot and they knew that he was the uh the guy that was gonna have to compete Keith Hale, he's a ball player. He would hold the guys accountable. It was all out of love. That's that's how you get better. He was our starting center fielder until we all decided to move him to right field. And I, I think that was a good move because his arm is, is crazy. He just lets it fly. And in Arizona, he made an insane Jim Edmonds catch over the head. He could make that play anywhere, any position. He might have one of the best, hey now, of my my life like he he's spot on with that he's prime time 
Yeah, he's also one of the most intense competitors that I think we're ever going to have. He was, man, it always seemed like he could explode at any time. He was that involved, that intense, that focused on the game. And man, oh man, I, I, I give anything to that to all of our players. Ray Harmon, Triceratops. He's by far, in my opinion, one of the best designated hitters ever. I just feel like he's always coming in clutch, always piecing the ball. But when he's on the field, it's even better. He loves the game. Very respectful. That's that's a team dynamic player right there. In the playoffs, he hit a pinch hit home run. I, I think that's the big accomplishment. It's one of his last times swinging the bat, most likely, and he hits a home run. So that, that's going to be a story to tell. He was definitely a competitor. He really did not let the fact that he wasn't going to start every game get in his head. He was always ready for his at bat, and he had clutch his wish, like Drake said. He really just wanted the team to win. He was, he was a very team-oriented player, and he was at the point to where he wanted to contribute to the success to where he wanted to even pitch for us. And he had a pretty good arm for it, too. We had a pretty good staff, and we had a good bullpen, and we trusted what we had, and uh, we wanted to keep his mindset at the plate. The two things we preach over and over are attitude and effort. I've been saying that since day one. Trey was a day one guy, 2019. He got his undergrad. He just got his master's. If you bring your best attitude and your best effort, everything else will fall into place. And that is the epitome of Trey Harmon. Not a lot of people know this, but he's a third. He's actually James Harmon the third, which is why they call him Trey. He's one of those guys that, it, it, you know, his attitude was just unbelievable. If he got the start, great. If not, okay, he didn't pout about it. Sure, he wants to be out there like everybody else, but his support for the rest of the guys in the team was just unbelievable. He just was, he's such a great teammate. You know, there's, there's a lot of things you can bring aside from your play on the field, be on time, be a great teammate, all that stuff, you know? And, and he's that. He is all of that. And we were lucky to have that guy as long as we did. It was a tough pill to swallow. I mean, those are the kind of games you need to jump out of the starting gate with a, a, a big win. We gave it all we can, but unfortunately it wasn't enough. We, we felt invincible for the longest time. We were on about a nine-game win streak. Got hot at the right time. We faced Hamilton Valley when we wanted to face them. With with our starters, Slack, uh, Desi, and Rio, say they all gave us quality starts for that. Bass were obviously really, really strong. Playoff mentality is a lot different. Hamilton Valley is a very good team, and they they bounce back pretty good. Uh, they have a lot of experience in the playoffs, and uh, they're a pretty respectable team. And it was just one of those games where we we lost, and we, we knew what we had to do after that, and the rest was uh, – the rest was history. Having to face them first was a was a very tough one. The next one, Emory Riddle, we had to face Arius as well. Um, so we we had a very tough road in the playoffs. Antelope Valley was a very strong team, and they knew what they were doing. They they came ready to play. to say about that guy. He took on a leadership role right away. We were lucky to get him over the summer through Dylan's summer league team. He had graduated from Xavier and he did pretty well there. And he was coming, he was out here. And he's our leadoff hitter. He's the heart and soul of our team. He would lead our team prayers. He's never down. He's always picking guys up. Hey, wash it, wash it. Just move on to the next, you know? That guy is the soul, the heart and the soul of the Westcliff baseball program. There's no ceiling. You know, you can't just say one or two things about him and have people understand. He played injured the whole year, labrum tear, problem with muscles all over the place, sore and sun. And he would always come to me. I'm like, he said, you're not taking me out of this lineup. I don't care. I don't know how he did it. This guy surely plays for the love of the game. He just keeps giving you 100%. And the longer the season went on, the more pain he had, the more injured he, had, he was. He found a way to deal with it and get the most out of himself to be the best that he could be. Yeah! yeah. Hey, what do you say, baby? Hey, let me get two clubs in a brick flip.
Robbie Willard, we saw that we wanted a little bit more catching depth. We wanted to get his bat in the lineup. So his bat is uh, arm strength. He's still young, but he, he called a good game at times. When I wasn't calling games, he, he stepped up and called games, and uh, there was no complaints. Hoping we get him back next year, uh, he will be an impactful player for us, especially at the young age too. If we can, if we can keep him around, he's going to be a, a star. Let's go, Let's go, Rip. Let's go, Rip. Get away, let's go, baby. Next guy up. Come on now, here we go. Gavin, also a year number one guy, 2019 to Soro High School. In the very first Blue Gold World Series we had, he won the MVP of that series. He hit 556. It's unbelievable. Year number one, probably game of our lives, Concordia. They had us down eight to one in the fourth inning and we walked them off nine to eight in the 13th. Gavin got the win. He went five innings and gave up nothing. Gavin went in there and just kept him off balance. I mean, this is a division two playoff team and they've got some heavy hitters. A smart guy, always had a good GPA, great teammate. He'll do anything he can to help the team win, whether it's pinch run or a pitch out of the pen or play second base, whatever we needed him to do, he would have done it. Can't be automatic, boys. Come on. Stay loose, stay loose. Right here. It's a ball! It's a ball! It's a ball! Yeah, Danny. Yeah, Danny. Let's keep that. Yes! He hit 357. He could have been all conference. He was leading the conference in steals for a while, but his injuries kind of set him back. I think he finished fourth in the conference. But that shows the other guys that, hey, I'm not giving up, and I'm not letting you give up either. And that's that's Eddie Rivero, and hopefully he's back for another year. I mean, that, that guy at the top of our order, heart and soul, heart and soul. Yeah, yeah no, that's a job, baby, that's a job! Let's go! That's a job, I'm going home! Desi really was one of a kind. He's very quiet, uh, but he definitely led by example. He never complained, never questioned anything, and he got to work. And I mean, it, it showed his success. In order to have that success, you got to have the effort and the commitment. And he brought everything. I mean, there was times when I went into the gym in Costa Mesa and I'd see someone working out and I'd look and I was like, holy crap, that's, uh, that's Desi right there. And he could have been the number one for a lot of teams, but we were very fortunate to have Desi in the three hole with Slack and Doffner and Rios and ahead of him. And he didn't complain one time. He actually liked doing that. He liked pitching in the three spot because he wanted to be the one that ended the series for us in a, on a good note. Zane Parmenter 
was not our starting shortstop. Uh, our starting shortstop was was Joey D, who, who tore a hamstring. And I turned around, I said, Zane, he already had his glove and was halfway out the dugout. He fields a ball and gets rid of it. He's got a good arm. His defense is just off the charts. And so he got loose and he never gave the position up. He got hot. There were points where he was four for four in games. He was eight for 10 over a couple of games. He was hitting about 420. He was just off the charts and making the plays. He was more than a pleasant surprise. He does the work too. He'll stay late. He'll take ground balls. You know, when you have a guy like that hitting in the eighth spot, that that's a bonus that people don't realize. He can handle the bat. You got a man on third, less than two outs, safety squeeze, bam, get a run. You know, you can rely on that guy for a lot. He was a great contact hitter and we talked all the time about hey keep your hands through and go to the right side tons of his hits went to the right field you needed something clutch and the guy would come up with it um good guy camaraderie guy as well he gelled with everybody his attitude on and off good student he also helped the surf team oh Netflix. my gosh yeah he and keaton yeah. snack yeah we're Welcome. on the surf team oh, God, baby. yeah oh, God. Wait a fight, Des. Wait a fight. 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 Hey, hey. It's important to note that Desi threw the first pitch in the history of Westcliff. He was our number one in year number one. You know, he had a heck of a year this year. I think he finished fourth in the conference in ERA, uh, just behind Eddie Rios. And the thing that impressed me even more is he got his undergrad here, then he got his master's here, and recently he got his dream job. You know, going back to his his alma mater. Uh, he got a, a, a teaching job. He's a, a baseball coach and a basketball coach there. He, he, you know, it took him about a minute to uh, to get the job that he wanted. And so he's a teacher and a coach. And I, I'm more proud of that than anything he did on the field. I played in the Astros organization a hundred years ago and I was talking with a, a friend of mine and I said to him, Hey, listen, man, I need an ace. I need a guy that can blow mid nineties. He said, Julian Tristan. I'm, I'm sorry, who? Julian Tristan it told me about him. He said he's 95. What's his number? About a minute later, I got him on the phone. And before the surgery, he was 95, 97. Surgery brought him down a little bit. Uh, he, he came back probably a little too soon after the TJ. And then uh, I believe he had flexor tendon on top of it. So he's got a scar on top of a scar. So we went really slow with him and we needed to. Uh, I did a little bit of my due diligence. I spoke with a few people, some of his former coaches. We were all in agreement in how we should handle this. Now, when I met him, you know, the first time I met him, he brought his dad, which was great. And, and you know, he also wants to get his, his master's. Absolutely. He graduated from Santa Clara. I said, hey, I can, I can help you get your master's. So why don't we explore? We had a real nice meeting, the three of us. And he said, okay, I'm in. And when we signed that guy, I thought, we're going to have a chance. We're going to have a good a good chance because I could see this guy being the ace somewhere along the line. Let's go, JT! Let's fucking go, baby! Let's go! Good. 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 Very mature. Very mature, Roach. The guy in the middle needs to be Evan Rocha. Roche was voted a team captain, and he was leading the charge to renounce his captaincy along with Yuli Duran and Eddie Vokes. And his rationale is a sound one. I've never run across this where we had a an entire season with no captains, but they all got on board and he said, you know, this is a senior team, an older team, and I don't think just three guys should lead. I think everybody should lead. He played second base for us and nails, didn't make any errors, but hey, we need you in the outfield. Okay, so he went to the cent he went to center field. One of the things that people don't realize about that guy is that his on-base percentage was through the roof because he led the world in walks. <laughs> 
I don't care how, it's how many. And that guy was on base all the time. He took on the leadership role and guys followed him. You know, he's a good student. He graduated, a high character guy on the field and off the field. And we were lucky to have him. A guy like Evan Rocha is a backbone that holds the whole thing together. We had beach workouts for the first time. He was the reason why that went so well. Everyone was pretty tired and we 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 didn't take it easy on them in the beach workout. We wanted to set the standard right away. We want to set the culture and that our effort and attitude is what's going to lead this team. And guys were guys were tired. And he was the one that kept holding guys accountable. He would run with them. He would make sure they were still getting their reps done. When I had to get on him my first season, he could have been hating me until he graduated. A few days after, he he was a changed man. And I've learned a lot from him as a coach as well. Yeah, I have nothing but respect for him. The way he handled that situation, it shows how mature he is, how his character is. Speaking of Rosh, he just sent where I just I, <laughs> he just sent us a text, text from him. <laughs> With the, the amount of seniors we had, they, they knew it was now or never. With a lot of revenge in their hearts, they uh, they wanted it. team they wanted to put their number on us and we uh we wanted to fight now the returners who were there with us now they know what to expect moving forward to where at this first day of fall they're going to be ready to go and they know what they won having that game under their belt and having that win really showed them what we are capable of doing and what they want to look forward to in the long run. Wanted to win that game, not just to keep our season going, but to at least even the series during the course of the year with them. They win two, we win two. The only series we did not win was in the entirety of the year was Benedictine. And we were close because the first game, they beat us 11-10. That game could have gone either way. And so that's the only thing that kind of kind of concerned me. But other than that, all good. Let's go! Let's go! We're not leaving, baby. We're not leaving. Let's go! We're not leaving. Come on, baby. Let's go! We are not leaving. We are not leaving, baby. Let's go! Let's go! So my girl to pipe down, need it right now. Lately I've been going to the lights out. Got my face up and my eyes down. Shorty, now you know what this is like now. Now I got a big drop top and I'm rolling. And I told my girl I'ma be up till the morning. Feeling like I'm two, three, cause you know I'm zoning. Shorty got a way, we've been chilling by the ocean. Now I got a big drop top and I'm rolling. And I told my girl I'ma up till the morning, feeling like I'm two, three, cause you know I'm zoning. Shorty got a way, we've been chilling by the ocean. I told him my way, what can I say? Ooh, I got them looking at me sideways. I can't take no days off, they know I can't. Lately, I've been in a different mind state, and I got them tripping. I've been making hits, so I don't got no time for missus. Shorty want to ring, and she trying to be a missus. I've been so ahead, I don't think y'all really. Got my face up and my eyes down 
Shawty, now you know what this is like now. Now I got a big drop top and I'm rolling. And I told my girl I'ma be up till the morning. Feeling like I'm two, three, cause you know I'm zoning. Shawty got a wave, we been chilling by the ocean. Now I got a big drop top and I'm rolling. And I told my girl I'ma be up till the morning. Feeling like I'm two, three, cause you know I'm zoning. Shawty got a wave, we been chilling by the ocean. Yeah, yeah. I can tell I'm running stacks by I am a mathematician Just when many plays up from my dealer I get commission I'm walking, I got my just get turned this bad like exhibition If a wild fucking nigga did in the first time Quarter a million and it hurt my ass, hurt my shoulder In Dubai, got my bass down my turn and tide off Moving in a motorcade in the bourbon water solo Yeah, solid test stones look like breath mints Yeah, I can rock fake jury, I need an EpiPen game still sticks in my craw. There was one call we didn't get when the, it was three to one, and the next pitch was a three run home run. You know, we're one pitch away from getting out of that inning, and, it's, and we're still in it. Then they got some momentum and they became Benedictine, the team that we know. Two out walk, two out walk. There came a point in that game, uh, after that home run, we were down 6-1, and then they added a couple, and it was my focus to get everybody in the game. So I started taking guys out. I wanted to make sure that the guys that whose careers were ending were getting in the game, and everybody did, and they ended really well. I mean, uh, Trey ended with a base hit. Nolan Watson ended with a double in the gap. It's unfortunate the way the game ended with uh, Ray Moore on deck, and that's still sticking in my craw. I really wanted him to get in that bat. Hum, Ev, hum, Ev, do what you do here, baby. Do what you do here, Ev. Great job. Great job. Wait. Good. Good job. 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 Ray is a character guy. He didn't complain, he didn't moan, he didn't whine to anybody or any of the coaches about why aren't I playing. He just stepped up with his character and integrity and supported the team. Ray Moore graduated. He got his degree. He was a first year guy. He came here in 2019 and he was our starting third baseman. You know, what he endured for four years while he was here uh, was very up and down for him. Uh, a lot of it down. The first game of the year for him, and he blew out his shoulder five minutes into the game and missed the whole year. But because he's got such a great outlook on things and he works hard, he works very hard. He never misses a practice. He's never late. He doesn't mouth off. You know, he's just one of those guys that everybody, will, I'll take a dozen Ray Moores. He's coachable. He's supportive. And he's a good player. He's solid. He's got a good bat and a good glove. You know, Ray Moore is... He's one of the backbone guys of this program. Started off at the beginning and still here, fortunately for us. Halfway! Yeah! Good! 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 He and Slack. Me and Drake, uh, we pretty much grew up with Keaton Slack. He's been a family friend for us for a very long time. His uh, his dad was actually um, my uncle's uh, agent. Known him for a long time. We actually played played a college ball together. Uh, we were teammates at Bristol University. He ended up needing a place to play, and we needed a pitcher. And right away, I thought about Keaton Slack. Good. Keep working. Let's go to war. A lot of the guys love him. We know exactly what he's capable of doing. When he's on, he's, 
easily could be the best player on the on the field. He's older than me. I mean, he's 29, I'm 28. But whenever I ask him to do something, whenever I, I need him to be a leader at practice or on the field during a game, yes, sir. He, he treats me like I'm a coach and that's exactly what he needs to do here. He helps the younger guys pave the way in the culture of what the coaching staff is trying to do here. Let's go, Seven. Come on, Danny. Come on, Danny. Let's go. Come on, right Seven. Come on, right Danny. Right what do you say, baby? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Danny Iskeda, he's a player who you could put anywhere and he will succeed. He tracks down every ball. It's never a doubt with him. What makes him so special is no matter where he is, he will work his butt off. He always respected the coach's decisions, whether that's playing him in the outfield or even on the bench. If we needed him there, he will do it. He comes from a very good family, and that's why he is how he is. Like His grandparents go to Ikejna every single game and just cheer him on, not even just himself. He cheers on, or they cheer on the team. He was the kind of guy who pissed off some of his teammates because we put him in different positions, and people got uncomfortable with him because he was he was a high-caliber player. And we put him at third base, and people were a little irritated with that because they were scared of losing that job. And it kept the, one, it kept the uh, competitive nature at practice going because people were like, okay, well, this guy's here now. We're going to have to really step up our game and, and really make an effort to, to play. And he was just that kind of guy where he made the effect on other players to compete. He was a competitor and he brought that energy wherever he went. I mean, outfield, third base, shortstop, sec, you could put him anywhere. You could put him a catcher and he would compete and he would make other guys compete because he would do such a great job at wanting to commit to being the best at that position. And so having that was really a, was really a big part to our team. And he is someone who doesn't really like taking a credit for anything, but, uh, uh, us coaches really, really, really appreciate all he did, and uh, we are very excited to have him back. But all you need to know was the game we were playing San Diego Christian, and he scored on a wild pitch from second base. He ran right past me at third, and he saw the catcher still going toward the ball, and he just didn't stop. And, he, and you know, you don't see that very often at any level, and that's what you need to know about that guy. He goes 100% all the time. He doesn't care where he is in the lineup as long as he's in the lineup. 160 at bats, 10 strikeouts. Man, you can guarantee that guy's going to put the ball in play. He is awesome. Let's go, one o'clock. As the game was going on, and after we got to 6 1 and 8 1, I got melancholy because I knew it was coming to an end. Um, and I just I didn't want to accept it. I just wanted it to keep going because, you know, it's a spe it was a special team. Guys got along really well. They hung out with each other, even away from baseball, you know, and, and that's one of my hopes is that they make lifelong friends. Oddly enough, today, my college roommate called me. Teammate, roommate. Yeah, he lives in Phoenix. And, you know, we hadn't spoken for a while. He dropped me a call out of the blue. And that's what I want for these guys. 30 years later, make sure they still have that relationship with their teammates. And I think they will. So we spend months on end together, pretty much every day. Sometimes you go through a rough patch personally, they're always there for you when you need them. To see them go farther, knowing that, it really meant a lot. When Eddie Rivero yells out, pass the baton, which pretty much means you don't have to go for a home run, a big hit. You just need to get a walk, a regular single, or even just do a job, get a sacrifice fly, hit it to the right side. It's just things like that that really shows their character about selflessness. Definitely Rivero, Duran, and Consensua, they were the heart and soul of this team. There were others for sure, but they really understood the game and how to teach the younger guys to really mature in the game. Come on, folks! Come on, folks! Let's go, Eddie. Let's go. Go! Eddie Vokes, hands down, is probably my favorite player that I've ever coached. He, he's a leader by example, 100%. He's very quiet, but I mean, he's first one at practice, last one will leave almost every single time. Him and I have grown a pretty strong relationship. As, as much as everyone knows, um, obviously I went through a pretty tough time this, this season. Mentally, it's been hard to, to be a part of the team, but baseball has been the reason why I'm so happy because for personal reasons, she knew what it meant to me. Eddie Vokes, let alone everyone. I mean, the whole team, the whole coach staff, whole Westlake family, they were all there for me, but Eddie Vokes in particular was the one that 
<clears throat> kind of resembled the same thing as me. He was going through a tough time as well, and we kind of helped each other through it. And he, he would always message me. He would always uh, ask me how I'm doing after practice sometimes. And little things like that. He knew that whenever we needed him, he was there for us. Could have been a starter, but with the starters we had, it was hard to get him in that in that role. I think he is going to be a huge piece of our success moving forward next year. In my opinion, the Desi, the silent leader who people are going to look up to. Ryan Naranjo, very excited to have him back. There was times where he wasn't too excited and happy about the uh, the coach's game plan with the catchers, but he still worked his uh, his butt off. He still cared a lot about the team and uh, for the greater good. And when he did get in the games, he he made it known that he wanted to play. Pretty good at bats. Pitchers loved pitching to him too. He was a funny guy, very funny guy. Uh, him and Jack competed to be the funniest catcher, I think. The funniest guy on the team is Jack Berrios. His little comments how he handles the umpires. It's unbelievable. But yeah, you're missing uh, Naranjo. Naranjo and Weller are all both sleeper picks for uh, funny guys. Naranjo's a crack up. Can I uh, say some? <laughs> I, I miss Naranjo. Naranjo is just one of the funniest guys. And it's, it's funny to see him make jokes because people can find any way to make jokes back to him. And then that fuels the fire to him. A good friendship is one with jokes. Some of them, it's their last time ever playing baseball. So for them to realize that you need to end on a good note and not put your head down for your last game ever, it shows, it speaks volumes of them and their character. Come on, Trey! Come on, man. It's a push up. Let's go, Trey. Come on, Trey! Come on, Trey. Come on, Trey. Come on, Trey. Come on, baby. Come on. 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 His God-given ability and talent, he's a big guy, 6'2", 6'3", 215. He's got a lot of athletic ability. He runs better than you realize. He's got a real good arm. He's a vacuum at third, and he became our number four hitter. He also hit about 370-something. It was, uh, I think, uh, honorable mention for all conference. He had two bad heels. You know, his feet were bugging him the whole year. And I always, you know, he just... He persevered. He just said, you know what? I'm just going to play through it. You know, we, we were lucky that he did because he was an anchor. You know, having our three, four, and five with Duran, Wasson, and Costantua, what are you kidding me? Holy cow. Those are the numbers like three, four, and five hitters in the whole conference. And we just we just kept it going. And, and you know, when we needed a clutch hit, Nolan was there with a clutch hit. Um, also an intense competitor. He hates to fail. And, you know, baseball is built on that. It's hard to get a hit every time up. Oh, man, don't let it affect you when you go out there on the field. And, you know, he was able to separate. You know, I was I, I loved writing Wasson in the fourth spot in between our left our two left-handers. You know, he had a ton of RBIs because the guys ahead of him were on base. He got to hit behind Yuli. Why do you think Yuli hit 478? Because you got a guy like Wasson hitting behind him, you know, and Wasson hit really well because he had Costantua hitting behind him. So it was the perfect storm for us in three, four, five hole with Nolan right in between the two lefties. You know, uh, he's a team leader. He's vocal. He's outspoken. He likes to poke fun and have a good time. Consummate teammate all the way around. Yeah, very vocal guy in the uh, yeah. dugout. And he's from Washington, so you can't beat that. He made sure the dugout was less outside chatter, more involved in the game. And even when he wasn't having success on the field, he was having success as a team leader in the dugout. And that's something we really appreciate. Come on, folks. Come on, folks. Good, good, good. Yeah, yeah, buddy. Buddy. Folks, really good, bud. Really good. Let's go. Bring it to him. Let's go. Hi, folks. 
Baseball guns for what people to have fun. Have fun with the game they gave us. Come on, folks, have some fun, baby. Let's go. It's dangerous. Handle the stick, you. Hi, y'all. Let's go, you. I'm out. Hi, you. I'm out. Hey, you Good. 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 Come on, you. Oh, you Let's go, you. Yeah, yeah my yeah. 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 You lay. I don't, I don't even know where to start. I guess a couple years ago, there was a rumor that Marymount was cutting out its sports program. I got on their website and I started looking at their roster. I was only interested in two. One of them was a pitcher and the other was Yuli. I just thought, man, that guy looks great. Fast forward a year and we're playing a three game set. It's the third game and I'm watching this guy and he seems bigger than life. First pitch of that game, he gets a high fastball and hits it about 450 feet. And I'm watching him the whole time thinking, man, oh man, this guy's just, he's unbelievable. So now Marymount is closing its doors after almost 60 years. And coincidentally, Dylan's summer league team, first baseman, was Durant. I always contended that Yuli could play at any level. He could have played D1. He's just that good. He didn't get a chance. In fact, he didn't get a look from anybody. I wanted this guy at the top of our list. This is the guy. And I can't believe that with all these teams he got in touch with, oh, well, we don't have room. We don't have room. Do your research. This guy is unbelievable. I've never been as confident in a player as I was in Durant. Every time he stepped into the box, he looked like he was going to get a hit or at least hit the ball hard. He led the conference in RBIs. And one of those reasons, because the guy's hitting in front of him, Eddie Rivera would get on base, still second. Danny would get him over and it's an easy RBI for Yuli. And we're up one nothing. That happened at least half the games that we played. I, I don't, I can't even tell you how valuable he is. He hit 478. That was third in the conference because 479 was Costanzo. The last game of the regular season, we're playing Benedictine and we're down by five runs. We get a bunch of runs. They tie it up. And in the last inning, one out, and here comes Yuli. Well, he drives the ball in the gap, and I'm hoping he gets to second, but he holds up at first. So his average is 478. Well, also at 478 is Costantua. And two pitches later, he lines one in the left center field gap for his base hit that put him at 479. And Yuli is trucking all the way around, and I'm sending him. And it, you know, he slides across home plate without a play and the place just erupted. Yeah, it went crazy because they were, I think, number, you know, seven or eight in the nation at the point, Benedictine and great team, great team. And, you know, we took him down and we almost did in the first game as well. But it was just that was senior day. It was an emotional game. Just it was a great way to end the regular season. And it started with Yuli. Everything offensively. You know, had it was, I don't want to say it started and ended with Yuli because, you know, Eddie Rivero starts a lot of stuff off for us as well. But Yuli was always in the thick of it. And I mean, that guy would come up if you need a base hit or you need a sack fly or you got to hit a ground ball just to get a run in. That guy was automatic. He got one hit every two at bats. <laughs> you know, when he said, Coach, you got me, I'm signing. Thought, okay, we got that guy and we got some other guys coming in. What a great recruiting class. I have a lot to say, but I'm, I haven't said it the right way enough about the guy. Because that's how much he meant, not just to this team, but to the program. I have a recruit talking to me just the other day. And, uh, you know, we're, we're talking about our infield. And I always say, hey, the conference, we had the conference player of the year, Yuli Durant. And the recruit said to me, do you mind if I talk to him? Absolutely. So I sent him Yuli's uh, um, contact information. And they had a nice chat. And I think the guy's close to signing with us. You know, it's just it extends off the field as well. Yuli's going to get his master's. And he's going to, whatever he does, he's going to be a success in life. The ambivalence or the ineptitude or, or the nonchalance of some of the other programs brought Yuli to us. And we had the year we did because of him. Impression he left on not only the returners, but like Shermet said, the future recruits is such a important piece to our program. It's, it's just, it's insane. It's, it's something special. And that's something that not many people can say they, they could do.
When he came in three years ago as a freshman, I remember talking to the coaching staff and saying out loud, that guy is a number three hitter. He's going to hit third in the lineup. He could probably do it right now as a freshman. We did not have a lot of left-handed hitting, three or four bats. That was about it. But he made some corrections between years number one and year number three. And you could see it at the plate. The fact that he can hit a ball to any part of the park, he can hit a home run off the scoreboard and then drive the ball left center, which he does all the time. He became a great hitter because he uses the entire field. A lot of the pitchers in our conference are right-handed. He didn't face a lot of left-handed pitching. He knew how to get the most out of his swing. Now, the fact that he did a lot of working out with Trey, putting on weight and muscle, his swing got quicker, his hands got quicker, his pitch selection got better. There's times where I, he may make an out or maybe a strikeout here and there, and he'll come to me and we'll talk afterward. And he, I don't have to tell him what he did wrong. He already knows. He'll go up there, make the correction in real time, and get the results. I mean, there were times when that guy, you know, he, we had two walk-off hits that were huge, and both of them were Costantua this year. One of them was that game against uh, St. Catharines. And I'm not sure how he did it, but the winning run was at second. And it was, yeah, and it was Wasson. And the ball, the pitch was in the dirt. It short hopped his bat. And he still lined a single to right center and drove in the game winning run off the ground. And then, of course, that the big laser into the left center field gap against Benedictine on last day of the, of the regular season. You know, he was the perfect number five hitter. The guy was the number two hitter in the con and, you know, the leader of the conference. If you look at him, slap hitter singles. No, I don't want to take anything away from him. Great, a great player, um, hit 482 and 479 for, for Caleb at the end of the regular season. So, you know, he was he was one or two hits away from leading the whole thing. And same with Yuli, because Yuli was 478. He had so many RBI opportunities. He drove everybody in. You know, he was driving in runs like crazy. He just has a sweet swing. You know, he knows what he can do. He doesn't try to hit home runs. He can. It's not his swing. So he gets out of his swing and his body what he can. He was the consummate number five. We didn't know that at the beginning of the season. We knew he was going to fit in there somewhere. Wasn't sure where, but my goodness, man, we got him in the DH spot right there. He's also a first baseman. It's going to be hard to move Uli out of that position, but he just was everything we hoped he would be. He's got another year or two with us, which is phenomenal. Um, you know, you get a guy like that with, with a season like that and his leadership coming back. Uh, and also, when you have that kind of season, his confidence grew. And not because he was cocky or conceited. No, no, he'd go up to bat and he'd say, you know what, I'm just going to take that outside pitch the other way. And guess what? Bam, line drive single to left. He knew it before it happened, you know, and then he'd turn on a low inside pitch and take one off the scoreboard. <laughs> he just, he could hit any pitch at any time. And, and the only reason he would fail is up to him, not because he got beat, but because he beat himself. That's it. He was just that good. Trey Harmon helping him out in the weight room and Eddie and, and Yuli keeping his head headspace right on the field. I mean, he became such a high caliber player that we we didn't know what we got. <laughs> we we were blessed with him. And I mean, with his hard work and attitude and effort, that's what made it possible. It wasn't it wasn't us coaches. He did this on his own. And and this is something that we will always appreciate. And we definitely look forward to him being the staple again for us next year. So it's just it was just really, really important to, to see him grow from last year to this year it's a new person he wants to win he wants to compete and he wants to do it in the right manner you know there'd be times where uh he'd be the sixth or seventh hitter in the inning but he'd have his helmet on and he'd be out talking to hitters who are on the on deck circle passing information back and forth he's always in the game he's picking up the, the donut or he's got a bat in his hands and, and he's not he might not even hit that inning but he just can't wait to hit. He just can't wait to get in the box and take a bat and, and, and swing. He could basically hit a ball just about anywhere on the field that he wants. Gotta make a call quicker. Gotta make it quicker. Don't call fastball up.
you know, I think they saw it, the writing on the wall as well. We met in the outfield after the game. It was emotional. Um, and then on the bus ride on the next day, you know, we could kind of, we could relax. It was over. We could, we could exhale, you know, guys starting to go their own way. You got to collect the uniforms, you know, that kind of thing to put a period at the end of the season. And it was just, for me, it was melancholy and, and emotional. And I think it was for the guys as well. I got 